Salamat pagi. Have a look at the setup. I thought I'd show you the setup of the coastal emu. There's the mid length Okanui boardies. It's been a bit too cold for those. Sponge head, Palo Santo stick, combi guy. That's Pop's heart that he gave me. Look at that little Jenny. Kettle. She has a righty whistle on her. Surfboards, the frudge, the rod, hasn't caught anything. Master bedroom. It's a bit dirty, but I haven't had any guests. You're my first. Straps. Running low on krill. Some spaghetti. That's really that's that's in the bin. That's crushed. This is what happened. I think it took a tree branch to the side, mate. Yeah. Oh, now look! Oh, I won't even have to charge you for cutting with that piece. A bunch of two piece of material, a sewing machine, and a food van, <laughs> and a van deck. Just like take off around Australia. That would be something. Sitting there all by myself, listening to everybody, everybody saying, Be like everybody else. Oh, you see, I gotta be me. It ain't nobody just like this. I got to be me. My baby, hit or miss. Look at you sitting there, you're all by yourself. You're living there, everybody, everybody, they ain't be like everybody else. No. Yeah. <laughs>
Hey, mate. He's watching pornos. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where are we going, Arlo? There's more. I mean, I'm working now. I will be working. You're working? We're setting up Nick's camper. We've got this good bit of engineering here to hold it on so it doesn't fall off and kill anyone. We've wired it up and now we've lost the drill because we need to drill another hole to put that on. And I don't know where it is. And then when we're done we can go surfing tomorrow? Yeah, we're going to fight. We're frothing. Ah, very good. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Might as well kick the feet up and watch the wetty dry. Last I was here, I met a guy named Pete and his dog Skip. Pete collects cuddle bones at the beach and sells them at the local markets for people with pet birds. Says he's the only one in town with a license. On you, Pete. The drive heading south is lush and green and gets thicker and thicker the further you go. It was devastating to see the town of Tarthra had been hit by a bushfire. 69 houses were destroyed, but some just survived. On to Oberst, where the coastal emu had suffered her first punctured tyre. Mick was quick to help. He said he'd been to Melbourne once and Crescent Head a few times. Said all he needs is his two dogs and his Ford Falcon to be happy. Sounds pretty good to me. I 
went to the very reaches of the southeast mainland, to Wilson's Brom. It's vast and untouched. fell off. <laughs> Boards went everywhere. Cooking gear. I guess it's just it's no one else's fault but mine for being such a rookie. But really fucking annoying. Let me try and get that back on. Anyway, let's go hiking and forget about it. Sometimes the best parts of the trip were the ones when everything was rather quiet. It certainly made these ones seem a lot noisier. After two weeks of spending money on too much fun in Melbourne, we jumped on the spirit of Tasmania to the Holy Land. This is Fed. He likes a VB and taking photos. He joined me and was my co-pilot all the way to Margaret River. But you'll see more of that soon. We spent a month in Tasmania and travelled the circumference of the island. Dark Mofo was a highlight, especially when Woody and Jasper whip out the guitars at the pub. Someone gave Fed and I a gummy bear injected with LSD, 
Fed had a lot of fun. I was a bit too spooked. Too many flames. We slept up in zero degree temperatures on ridges. Saw Cradle Mountain and some of the most beautiful countryside we'd ever laid eyes on. After Fed prayed to the swag gods, we thought there would be something around the corner, but it was just more sheep. Maybe Victoria would bring us some favourable conditions. Cape Otway in southern Victoria is where the southern oceans collide with the Bass Strait. It was $25 each to get in, but the locals gave us a backtrack so we could spend that money on fuel. You definitely feel the power of Mother Nature here when the storms roll through. With no hope in the weather changing, we kept on driving. We had to stop in and see the 12, but now 10 apostles. I am nice the 10 apostles. Oh, I thought it was nine. Once Fed got his shoes waterproofed, we were good to go. After six weeks of freezing cold ocean, wind and rain, we drove without hesitation halfway across Australia and finally into some sunny days. After driving what felt like two lifetimes, we finally found some surf, and what a sight to see. Locals showed up and wanted to get really, really close, like way too close, for two hours. It was a special moment. Being some of the most sharky waters in the world, it was hard to concentrate. Even Smivy started speaking in tongues. This area is rugged and impossible to tame, but it is under threat. A Norwegian company is planning to deep water drill in some of the most uncharted waters for drilling this country has seen. If there were any mistake, it would end in disaster, not only for the residents, but half the coastline of Australia. It would be impossible to clean up an oil spill with such treacherous coastlines. 
The fight for the bike continues, and we hope those greedy bastards get the message. And it's simple. You're not welcome here. Travelling through southwestern Australia in winter is a temperamental experience. Sunny one minute, hailing the next. There are some beautiful things to see. Oh, here we are at the uh, tree top wall. Uh, valley, valley of Giants. Dad's a bit, Dad's a bit scared of heights. How you going, bro? Kind of jumpy, jumpy, bit shaky. What's he going out there? Have a look over the edge. <laughs> you got everything? Yeah. You sure? I think you left something back here. After three months in the car together, camping out in some of the most isolated places in the country, we were ecstatic to see this sign. And also a pub. Ah, how she tastes, Fed. <sighs> Cheers, mate, for the memories. Thanks for coming along. Fed left and I stayed in Gracetown for almost seven months in this little cabin. You meet some eclectic bunch on the road, and they're the ones you'll never forget. The monster one. I love this one. Especially with the wig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's 1976, I think. Uh, 70... It's either 76 or 79. I was already doing leather work, but I wasn't making masks. I just needed to make one to go to a fancy dress so that was the beginning of it but yeah i think i've even got Look, this is the first pattern and, I, and it's got the date on it that's how I... <laughs> it's got the news yeah. of the time <laughs> <laughs> Time has come to bodyboard behind the car. So we got this set up. Let's see if she works. I died to be in the travel lane, babe. Yep. Torin came over from the east coast with his girlfriend Ayana. I wanted to hike the Cape to Cape Shale before I kept heading north, and without hesitation, Torin drove over to join. Ayana loved the west coast and became best mates with the kettle. Do you either would either of you 
like a cup of tea. We hiked for four days, spanning a distance over 60 kilometres from Cape Naturalist to Margaret River. Because I'm leaving in a week's time, I gotta keep going. <laughs> it's a general occurrence when you, I get split up from Torren and Iwana. We just have meeting points. But I'm just gonna keep having a crack. It's not exactly Mount Everest, but it definitely feels like it. Wombat on my back. <laughs> I'll just keep going. This here is the last sand dune and Torrance's first glimpse of the finish line. After half a year in the southwest, it was time to journey on and head north into the desert, into the unknown.
There's never a worse feeling in surfing when you have all the time in the world to line up a section, and then you blow it. What's probably just slightly worse is watching your better abled, more stylish friend come off the bottom on the very next wave and belt it in front of you. But sometimes you get your revenge. Check your tozer. Watching Torin backhand tube ride is a show I always enjoy watching. He's a bit of a master. Just when you think your time in the West couldn't get any better, the iconic Oki pops out of the red cliffs and joins in on the fun. Towards the far northwest, the Ningaloo Reef is some of the most crystal clear waters I've ever seen. It was a real joy to run into this father-son duo who had travelled from South Oz. This was this 13-year-old Grom's first big surf trip. They were planning to head up to Broome and off to Indonesia after. It was safe to say this young lad was frothing. There was a lot of time spent on my own on this trip and the loneliness could eat at you. But to see the smile on this kid's face made me pinch myself and realise how lucky I was also. Things were running smoothly, but the very next day, that all changed. I suffered second degree burns on my hands and feet and lost almost all my possessions in the emu. But I was super lucky to be okay and for my car to be able to drive away. Three days on after the emu fire and it's time to do the rebuild. Put this little safety glove on. And let's begin the clean up. Crazy, still pretty crazy. Anyway, let's 
dua. Ready bucket. Some tools. Some cherry. So scared. That's crazy, man. The only thing that survived. Things were literally sitting there. My hand planes. I'm in town. And they're wooden. Stage two. I felt amazing to get back on the road, but the redressing of wounds and the accident had taken its toll on me. I was ready for Broome, but even more ready to start my journey home. place where many cultures meet and where the red dances with the blue. You can take a camel ride on the beach or go to the longest running cinema in the nation. There were signs I'd never seen before and some rather large tide changes. The tides in Broome can be as large as nine meters which helps when you get a snag. You just simply come back in the arbor and hunt around where you're fishing that morning. Once a year when the moon is full, there's a wonderful sight in Broome called the Staircase to the Moon. The light ripples off the sand flats and creates an optical illusion, like some magic glowing staircase.
Heading east, you can take the Gibb River Road through the Kimberleys. It's 660 kilometres of corrugated road that connects Derby to Kununurra. With no insurance, a dodgy car key and a drained emotional state, I chose to do it anyway. And it was worth every single anxious turn of the key. This was my first swim in three weeks after waiting for my burns to heal up just enough. This is a story about a place very, very, very far away from here where tiny little farmers live with their families and small one inch long barking dogs and they make their cars out of cans. Alright, so here we are in the middle of the Gibb River, 300 kilometers away from anyone, and the fucking back's falling off. Shit. But we've strapped it on. We stopped in on the guy and the screws kept snapping. So hopefully this holds it. These gorges are pretty worth it though. We'll get home. We'll get home. And as they drove, they looked for Car to car, smiling at each other as they drove past each other as they drove past each other and they smiled and they said hello farmer they said hello to each other hello farmer Even after all the swims in all the gorges in the world, I still left the Gibb River more covered in earth and dust than ever. It felt great to make it out in one piece. Northern Territory, there's two things to do here. You go barra fishing or you go mud crabbing.
一罐，一罐。My friends Mim and Rachel came and visited me. Laura, also from the far north coast, works in Gumbalanya. We got to cross over the legendary Kale Crossing, where Roland met us and showed us his local art. He was a great guide and really, really cared for our safety. Watch the knees and hold this rock on the right and calm side on the right. Careful and watch, hold these rocks on your right. Watch your legs, watch your knees, and watch your head, these rocks on your right. Watch your head, watch your knees, and watch your foot. Watching everything. They used the painting for the old days. People living in Arnhem Land, West Arnhem and they carry the paper bag and they bring it here and they put it paper bag in the side and they fill filling all milk tree wrap them carrying in the cave side and then use milk tree and the blood human mm -hmm. blood or kangaroo blood and the red oak cup and start to grounding and they put it all the stuff to to that paper bag and they wrap him and they take it in the cave side so my language i call nawaran that's the big like here yeah. As a city toga in the yellow ochre and the gold and some some painting like they see I don't see much because there's water like this wash away. There's mimi spirit like they see mimi spirit back here in the hand and five fingers. That's a good spirit. It's the mimi spirit. Six finger. That's the bad spirit. Oh. We got two spirit, bad and the good. But these days still we see the bad spirit in the skies like every night times. And always we came this hill and we see all the painting in the rock art because they, we got like idea from these hills. And so we come back to our center and start to painting in the walls, yeah. Roland believes through art and music, the community of Gumbalanya and the rest of Arnhem Land have endless opportunities for a bright future. After saying goodbye to my friends and only being able to secure a week's worth of work in Darwin, it was time to keep heading home. There comes a point on any journey when your desires change. You can smell home, you can see the finish line, even if it's still 3,562 kilometres away. I'll tell you what though, three 14 hour days in the car will really test you mentally. This is my last $50 and I'm 1500 k away from the Queensland coast. I just crunched the numbers and it's not looking good. <laughs> and I'm eight, nine grand in debt. So I'm gonna have to call Torren and see if I can borrow 500 bucks. Yo, oh, Toza, how are you, brother? Um, hope you're well. Just two questions. Um, I want to build a wooden boat together, and secondly, can I borrow 300 bucks? Thanks, brah. See ya. Good old Queensland, home to Mount Isa, Bob Catter, some serious roadkill, the good old Queenslander, and of course, Bundy Rum. To finally be back on the east coast and even see some waves was an exciting prospect. I rocked up to Agnes Waters to find. Is 
zero feet of swell. But luckily Noosa had something for me and my precious hand plane, the only member left from the car fire. When ex-tropical cyclones spin off the coast and produce east coast lows tracking from north to south, Queensland can be home to some of the more mind-bending point breaks you'll ever see. Once I'd gone south of Noosa, I felt I was already home. The familiar highway, the landmarks and mountains of my upbringing were hovering in the distance before I'd even seen them. This country is a gigantic wonderland with a past so deep and a future so uncertain. One thing is for sure, we were very fortunate to live in a house down under with such a big backyard to play in. I urge you to go see it for yourself. My name's Nick, Huru, and thanks for watching. Try to this 
side You've got a war in your head And it's tearing you up inside You're trying to make sense Of something that you just don't see Trying to make sense now And you know that you once held the key But that was the river And this is the sea yeah, 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 yeah. I was in love with you uh, before I knew it meant more than just wanting to be with you. We used to look for other girls that looked like you. But the laws of nature said forget a son, Lisa, that's what somebody told me. I worried about it a little bit, but that's all. I dreamt that you were Jonah Park and I was Don Quixote. And everywhere we went, the world was tin foil. But I gave up demon and became a priest to put it right out of my system. I worried about it a little bit, but that's all. Oh, who are you? Yeah. Now you used to play the guitar. We worked in a country band. I hung out down on the riverbank. Gone someday. Your brother was my closest friend. He drove a pickup truck. He used to bring me home sometimes from high school. Now I was 15, oh, the very 
very first time love broke completely inside me Oh, we were young and we were learning about it together And we had enough of what we thought we'd need of those well-known secret fables We worried about it a little bit, but that's all I regret my life, I won't be long enough To make love to all the women that I'd like to Or least of all, to live with the ones I've loved And I've never regretted a love affair Except one, and that's all over I worried about it a little bit, but that's all Now I heard you lived away up north Your kids are fat and plenty And I haven't seen your brother since away last Easter And if every other girl in the whole wide world Is just a little bit more like you I'd worry about it a little bit But that's all Now you used to play the guitar We worked in a country band I hung out down on the riverbank On Sunday Your brother was my closest friend He drove a pickup truck He used to bring me home Sometimes from high school